Okay, so we are done in Cinema 4D. We have taken this project from the very start to this stage and we've been through a variety of tools and techniques from the very basic to the more advanced. And uh, I hope you've learned a lot in this uh, section and I, know, and I also hope you've, uh, you've enjoyed this. Anyway, before we move on into After Effects, we need to set up our render settings and output some files that we can then import into After Effects and continue to work on this some more. I'm gonna go to the render settings and under output, I'm gonna go for 1920 by 1080 and we're gonna have an FPS of 24 and we wanna export all the frames so you change this under frame range let's skip the formats for now and go to the anti-aliasing this is something which has stayed at the default setting throughout the the entire series so far but let me enable the interactive render region and uh, just make sure the quality slider is all the way up to the top then I want to play around with the anti-aliasing or AA for short go to the drop down here and set this to best and we're gonna go with a one by one for the minimum level and four by four for the max and I'm gonna lower the threshold to five percent and this is basically going to make sure that our render is as fine as possible especially since we're working with such minute details on the edges if these settings are too low, uh, those areas may start to flicker and it may appear like noise and uh, obviously that's not something you want. These settings I just showed you here should give you a pretty decent render. And by the time we apply some other effects on top of this in, uh, in After Effects, some of the imperfections may be covered up but we still want to give ourselves the best possible result out of Cinema 4D without having ridiculous render times. All right, for some reason, Object Glow is switched on. Uh, I can take this off. And I want to go to the Save tab. And uh, I want to go to the Save tab. The file format we're going to use is called the RPF format. And this is a special type of format which allows us to embed other types of information into each frame aside from just the color information. In this particular case, uh, if we just click options, we want to embed a depth pass into each individual frame. And this is something we can extract inside of After Effects. I am also going to render this with an alpha channel, which means that these blank areas are going to be transparent. And I'm also going to set the depth to 16 bit. So we have more latitude for controlling the exposure inside of After Effects. And then we can just pick a location to save this. And let's just call this render. And that's it for the regular image. We also want to save what's called a multi-pass because inside of After Effects I would also like to have a layer which only carries the fire effect on the edges here because I want to use this layer to exaggerate the effect and uh, also for other purposes such as generating the particles that you see flying around the, the entire animation from the very beginning this sort of fire embers. They were generated using the luminance layer as a base uh, to get the color information. So to set this up, we need to switch on the multi-pass. And then down here, we need to open this and we wanna get the ambient pass. And this is what's going to output the luminance channel. Just to quickly illustrate how this works, if I go back to the save tab and just switch this off for a second and I go to output and set this to current frame only, let's render just one frame and we can take a look at what the pass is all about. So this is a rendering. I can go to the layer section and I wanna go to single pass. And if I click ambient, now you can see we have this layer which only contains the part of the render which contains the fire effect and this is going to be very useful later in After Effects. Let's close this 
and just set our settings back to all frames and make sure that our save is going out. And uh, we also need to set a file format for the multi-pass and I'm just going to do this as a PNG, also 16-bit, and I will save this next to my render. I'm just going to make a subfolder called multi. Let's open this and let's save this as multi and I can hit save. And uh, just double check, we have ambient occlusion switched on, caching enabled, 64 samples, and in the record density, this is set to minus four and minus two, and the rest is just the default. Just a warning before you hit render, because the RPF file format contains more information than just the standard color and uh, alpha, each frame is gonna be quite large. So you just want to make sure that there's enough free space on your hard drive in order for your render to finish with no issues. Okay, that is it for the render settings. Before I click the render button to output the final sequence, I just need to go to my lighting here and make sure that this background is switched off. Because remember, we only wanted this as a placeholder inside of uh, cinema so i'm just gonna actually remove this completely and then i can output my sequence <laughs> 